I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and today I'm speaking with Sarah Ahrens, a very talented songwriter who helped compose several of the songs for Trolls World Tour. Uh, first question I got to ask you is, you know, you look at the at, at, at a song uh, like The Other Side, and you look at, you know, your co-composers are people like SZA, Ludwig Gordson, and Justin Timberlake. What was the process like of composing songs alongside people like those? Um, a lot of sweating occurred, um, for sure. It was very nerve wracking, the whole experience. No, it was incredible. It was kind of like a floating on a cloud. It was like my dream experience for so many reasons and so many facets for each of those people being people I've been a huge fan of for a long time for their own achievements and, and music. And it was definitely like one of the most fun things I've ever done as well. It was incredible. What was the actual, what's the actual process like? Cause I've always remembered whenever, whenever yeah. I would look at like a, a song, a list of songwriters for a song and you'd see several people <laughs> and you wonder like, you know, if they're not like- How a, did a that happen? Yeah, exactly. You're like, how, how, did, how did they come together to compose this? So what was, I mean, that's what I was also curious about. What was that process like? Yeah, like actually, well, it started with, I think I like worked with Ludwig or hung out with him and we were, we, uh, were talking about the troll thing and songs for that. And I'd met with, I'd already done meetings about the trolls thing. And I was like, I'm super interested. I, I would love to write for this. And then um, I think I bumped into Ludwig at a cafe and he was like, oh yeah, we're trying to write the end song with Justin. Do you want to come? And I was like, yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I can make time for that, like for sure. But yeah, we, um, and then it went into my calendar and, and Max was added onto it. And I was like, oh yeah, nice unknown, like fresh, fresh out the gate songwriter added to the room. But we, um, yeah, we had a few days, the four of us. And yeah, it was just um, starting, I think a lot of it was just on, on um, synths or chords or bass lines. And we were just like, let's make some ideas and see what we come up with. And um yeah that was just so fun and then um it ended up being I think because I was doing some of the demo vocals Justin kept being like someone else needs to be on this someone else needs to be on this with me because I would uh be like oh I have an idea and I would sing it and then he would sing it and it would be like both of our voices and he was like I'd love this as like a boy and a girl vocal and then I was like it would be sick if it was scissor and then like left it and then a few weeks later, he was like, oh yeah, SZA like came around and she was like doing stuff on it and it sounds amazing. And I was like, wait, what? Like no one, no one told me. I was like, okay, sweet, what? And then yeah, I went and listened to it and I was like, this is incredible. And it's kind of this perfect situation. Is that how you find uh, um, uh, a lot of, uh, so, uh, is that how you find a lot of the songs that you've written uh, with other people? Is that how the pro it usually comes together? It's just like, you know, in a studio or just like uh, hanging with people and hanging with mm. the songwriters and then they, and they're just bouncing ideas off each other? Yeah, pretty much. Like when you're collaborating, that's generally the idea. It's like, it's one of those things where I remember I used to watch interviews and be like, explain how you do it. And now that I'm doing the interviews, I'm like, it's so hard. Like I can tell that there's going to be someone watching that's like, just tell me like bit for bit how you did it. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, damn, I, I just don't know how to do that. But yeah, like it is, it's just kind of like, you just talk about stupid stuff for ages and you're sitting there and you eat like, we're at the studio that have these like double stuffed Oreos all the time. So you just kind of go get them a lot, you know? And then there's just a moment where I think um, Ludwig played like the did it, 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 did it. And we were just like, and then he pulled up the beat and we were just like, this is sick. And then, yeah, you just start singing. Cause when you hear music, you start, singing and then that's kind of it and it goes from there but yeah it's just jumping in like when there's lots of people in the room well not lots of four people in the room you just kind of listen out you just got to keep your ears open and someone will sing something and you need to be ready to hear it and you know gather it all together so I mean you've been a songwriter for songs that before by a wide array of artists uh how did you first get involved in working as a songwriter that's such a good question. Um, I was in my bedroom and I was like, I want to try this thing. I think I'd found out um, Sia existed and Julia Michaels and all these songwriters. And I always wrote songs. I didn't know it was a job. I thought 
all the artists just kind of did it. I didn't know, I had no idea. And then I found out, yeah, who like Diane Warren was and all these people. And I was like, whoa, I could do that. Cause I obviously am not an artist. And I like to wear pajamas all the time. I don't like being on stage. And I was just like, at a point where I was like, I'm gonna try this. And if the doors don't open, then I'm not good enough. And if the doors open, then I am. And I think I just loved it more than I even knew I did. And I just, I think I read an interview where Diane Warren said, uh, when I started, I didn't know anyone in the industry at all, not one person, but I clawed my way in. And I was like, there you go, that's what I'm gonna do. And I was the same. I didn't know anyone, didn't know anything. I was like 18 or 19 and I was just like, I'm going to just go as hard as I can. I found, you know, made up people's email addresses, Googled publishers, looked at like, you know, artists and songwriters and who signed them and what company signed them, who at the company, who were they thanking in their speeches, you know? I just went nuts. Like, I like, I think I was like, tried to make up email addresses for Ryan Tedder one day. I was just like, I'm gonna just like write like 10 different email addresses that could be Ryan Tedder's email address. And then like, one of them might be it and they would all bounce back but you know sometimes it works <laughs> but I just went kind of crazy to do it and uh yeah and then I got got signed but in Sydney by an amazing woman Marie Hamblin so then it kind of started from there now uh you also you've been you've written uh songs that have also spanned uh, a couple of genres as well uh, is there a particular genre that you feel more comfortable working in as a songwriter? Not really. I actually feel super lucky that I'm able to kind of d just do what I love. Like it, even my taste in music, like one song is, you know, I, like I grew up on, it started with like soul music. I used to sing Aretha Franklin all the time. And then I got really into musicals and I used to sing, I was obsessed with Wicked. I bought green glasses because I was so obsessed with Wicked. And then you know, and then I was really into this quirky singer songwriter like Regina Spector, Ingrid Michaelson. Like I've always, and then when I uh, got to LA or got signed, I got obsessed with um, Scissor and Kendrick and Anti, the Rihanna album. And I just have always, and then I also love like Fleetwood Mac and the Beatles. And I was always just like, these are songs. It's melodies, it's lyrics, it's songs. And I think the thing that I find that's a common thread through it is everything I love is soulful. And I think that's why when I'm in the room with other people, like I remember I did a session with a country artist once and I'd never done it before. And he was like, you do the music and I'll bring the country. And I was like, great, like that's perfect. You know, and I, I think it's just like a, there's not one or, or another. Like I kind of love that I can jump around. It's it's all music to me and I love it all. And and uh, you're, you've also written songs that have been performed by uh, a wide array of artists. I mean, not just SZA and Justin Timberlake, but now also uh, Zed and Marin Morris and uh, several others that are escaping my mind right now when I when I need them. But uh, <laughs> yeah, same. Don't worry. <laughs> um, are there any art? I, I know a lot of people in uh, in these fields don't like to have like a bucket list or anything. But are there any artists or groups that you would love to see perform a song that you've written? Yeah, that, if anyone says that that's not true, I think it, it's, you know, they might not be uh, completely honest. I'd love to um, have a song with Rihanna. That's kind of my like, that's, that's the one. I just think she's iconic and like incredible as an artist. That's definitely so, the dream. So, I mean, also, you know, uh, we were talking uh, before we started recording uh, that, um, you know, you've, uh, you, uh, uh, got nominated at the Grammys for Song of the Year, a songwriter's award, as they always say, um, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago for uh, the song The Middle performed by Zed and Marin Morris. Uh, what was that experience like getting nominated for that? It was a very interesting <laughs> experience for me. I actually, it, it was incredible, but I actually, <laughs> this is so weird for people that don't know, but I actually had my leg amputated like three weeks before the nominations came out. And uh, yeah, it was like a wild time for me. So when I, I was back in Australia and um, you know, I was recovering and I just get a call from my manager in the middle of the night and she's like FaceTime and she's just crying. And I was like, cause she's like mum to me. And I was just like, what are you crying about? Like what's going on? And she was like, yeah, I'm a native of the year. And it was actually like one of the most 
incredibly perfect things and I you know was so happy like medically it was such a good thing for me I feel like I you know was sick and now I'm better you know and it's just that was like an incredible time for me just to kind of cap up this thing of like I, I know I was just so happy and it was like a weirdly happy time in my life and that was perfect because I kind of was like I have to be able to walk by the Grammys and that was just like such an amazing it was like a weirdly beautiful experience for me in a whole other way but I, it was awesome and you and you did get to and you did get to make that walk down the carpet oh yeah I walked I didn't do the carpet because I'm like no, I don't want people to take photos of me I'm a songwriter but I walked all the way to the whatever fourth row we were in and I sat there the whole night I didn't take a pee break I didn't take a snack break. Every time people were like, do you want to come get a drink? I was like, no, I am at the Grammys. I'm in the fourth row, get away from me. This is the cool, like J-Lo's dancing in front of me and I'm just like, come on guys, this is it. It was awesome. So one other thing that I was just curious about is, uh, so uh, you started writing songs in Australia and um, I'm, I'm curious, was what was the process like of how you ended up coming over to the States and writing uh, for more uh, uh, for stateside artists, was that was there a process that uh, where you consciously said I wanna I wanna uh, start writing for songs over there? Yeah, that was definitely deliberate. I think um, I had a, a big song in Australia, and it was awesome. Like I have a song on the radio, and I was like, this is the coolest thing in the world. And then when I started going back to writing sessions after that, you know, Australia is just a small place. So it just got to the point where really quickly, I'm like, oh, I've done the rounds. So it was like four studio sessions and I'm like, oh, I guess I've worked with kind of everyone. And I was just like, I got really down and I got really like, I knew that there was, I was missing something and I couldn't put my finger on it. And then I just thought, uh, now's the time. Like with the money I've got, now this is the time. If I just keep living here, I'm gonna spend it all just on, you know, being in Australia and living my life. And I was like, this is the time to put it towards this thing and I'm going to try and I'm going to go, it was kind of the same theory, like I'm going to try my best and if I'm supposed to be there, then I'll do enough to get funded to stay there or to get a visa and if I, if it doesn't happen, then it wasn't supposed to happen and then I just went and I went so hard. I worked every day, like all day, including Saturday, Sundays, double sessions. I did the whole shebang and I just knew it was, I don't know, I think I just knew it was the right thing to try. And I was like, you know, you've always got to try it because you're going to regret not trying it and whatever. And then it worked out. And I was like, oh, wow, I'm moving, moving to America. Let's go. Well, um, uh, Sarah, uh, thank you so much for joining us. We wish you all the best during this upcoming awards oh, season. Good. And, Thank you uh, so much. And to all of our viewers, please like this video, smash that subscribe button, and don't forget to go to goldderby.com and use the Gold Derby app to make your predictions and see if you can outsmart the top prognosticators in Hollywood. Thanks so much again, Sarah. Thank you.